Hey everyone, welcome to part 10 of my SQLized tutorial series, where here I'm going to be talking about paranoid tables. So a paranoid table is one where a record is deleted, but not truly deleted. Instead, a column named deleted at has its value set to the timestamp of the deletion request. So you can think of a paranoid table as performing a soft deletion of records. To make a paranoid table, you pass the paranoid true option to the third argument in our model definition. So if you can remember back up here where we actually created our model, and we have these, like our validate function everything, we can pass in another option called paranoid and set that equal to true. And just like this, we will get that deleted at column. However, as the value of this column is a timestamp, for this to work, we actually need to set our timestamps here to true. Because if you can remember, we originally set them to false so that we don't have an updated at or a created at column. But now, let me go in here, let's work with, um, let me remove all this. We're still working with our updated table. And let me just delete a user, so let me show you this. We've got our users in here. Let's delete, let's delete Witco here. So you delete by the user ID of 27. So what I'm gonna do is, if you remember, to delete a user, we use the destroy method, and we're going to destroy where the, another object here, the user ID is equal to, I believe it was, 27. And then, of course, we're returning a promise, so let's just, let's just log the data here. So dot then, and log our data. And then let's run this. Let's see what we get. So we should alter our table. You can see we're getting update user set deleted at to where deleted at is null and user ID. And you can see right here in our previous video that it seems like they are using some form of binding or replacements. Anyway, let's go in here. Let's select all from user again. And now if we scroll over here, you can see we have updated and created at again. But now we have another column called deleted at. And this is the time that this record, Witco right here, was deleted. So it's still in our table. It is just given a, a attribute in the deleted at column that isn't null. And so, but so let's go back in here, and then just some more customization. So we can also change the name of the column from deleted at to something else by using the key deleted at in our third argument in our model definition. So our third argument here, where we are, are defining. Now it's gotten big now, our user model, if we just pass in here, delete it at, and then specify something else, so let's say time destroyed, and now if we actually, let's run our program again, it'll alter our table, because of course we have alter true, let's go in, let's run it, and then if we scroll all the way over here, you can see the name of the column is now time destroyed instead of deleted at. And also, I just want to make a quick note that if you change the column name, um, the deleted at values that are already stored will be changed to null. But this one wasn't changed to null, of course, because when we ran our program in here, um, well, we altered the table, but we also destroyed the same user. However, though, even if your model is paranoid, you can still force it to hard delete something by using the force true option in the destroy method. So we were, here is where we're destroying our user, where the user ID is 27. We can pass in another option, let me clean this up so it looks nicer, makes more sense, we can pass in force to true, and if we do this, it'll actually remove it from our database. So it just says now delete user, or delete from user where the user ID is 27. Now if we run our query again, good old Witco at the beginning is now gone. But let's go back into here. And now, a cool thing about soft deleted records, though, is you can use the restore method to restore these deleted records. And what this essentially does is change the value in the deleted at column to null. Because if you can see in here, if it is set to null, that essentially means that it wasn't deleted. But if it does have a time or something in here, that means it was deleted. And so, of course, as I said, we do this with the restore method. So let's do user dot, get rid of force, but let's do destroy where user ID is 28 now. So if we run this, let's go in here, run this. You can see our user ID is 28. And now if we scroll all the way over, you can see we have our time destroyed. But let's say we want to restore this user or we want to bring them back. 
what all we have to do is user dot restore and then of course we can pass in a where and it's where user ID I believe it is 28 so if we do this let's go back in run this now if we scroll all the way over you can see that it's time destroyed is null again so that's an advantage of using soft records and then just something else is you might have seen in here we are getting a return value here that's just like how many um, we're updated. So when we're logging the data within our then statement, that's all that is there. Now you also may be wondering now how to ignore soft deleted records when selecting data from the database. Because technically, if you're selecting everything from the database, the, the destroyed data is technically still there because it's only been soft deleted. But lucky for us, SQLize automatically tags on a where is null for the deleted at column when we do a find all. So in other words, every query performed by SQLize will automatically ignore soft deleted queries, except for raw queries. So if we did a raw query like in our previous video, where we do like, um, you remember SQLize.query, if we'd like select all from user limit one, I think it should return the one at the top. So if we run this, you can see we get user ID 28. But then if we go in here and we run this and we scroll all the way over, you can see actually I restored them. So let me, let me just comment this out. Let's remove them again. Let's do user.destroy where user ID is equal to 28. Let's go in here. Let's run this. You can see we have a time destroyed that's been set. And now, if we comment this out and do this, let's run this. Let's see, it seems like we do get the first user in our table. So we are getting this user here, even though they have a time destroyed set. So if we ran it all here, you can see it's still selected the user. On the other hand, though, let's say if you can remember the SQLize, or let's just do user.findAll. If we do this, or no, let's just use find1, because you can remember that returns the first um, entry it'll find in our table. If we do this, it should be, shouldn't be ID 28, but the next one. And we can see that it is 29. So it has skipped this user at the top and is using the user pizza down here. So let's go back in. And then, but another cool thing we can do is if we want our query to show the soft deleted records, we can just pass paranoid false to the query method. And this will return every record even if they are soft deleted. So right here where we have find one, we can just pass paranoid false. And now instead of returning 29, it should return 28. So let's go in here, and there we go, we get 28. But so this is my video on paranoid tables. It's a, I think it's a cool little concept, soft deleting versus hard deleting records. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. In the next video, we are going to be going over something that's um, a little more intense. I'd say definitely a troubling or challenging topic with SQLize, and that is associations. So until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.